everybody. Thank you for joining us today. And a special hello and thank you to any Hart families who are watching this. Uh, today we are going to take you inside of Children's Chris Heart Center. It's our clinic area. And we're also going to get a live look at a pediatric heart ultrasound and take a look at some very cool 3D printed heart models. Our guide today is Dr. Jonathan Kramer. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here. You so, bet. Dr. Kramer is a pediatric and adult yep. congenital cardiologist. You he, bet. Does, he does it all. Um, and he's going to be our guide. So, if you have any questions about heart care as we go, please do not hesitate to put those in the comments below uh, for Dr. Kramer. And we'll do our best to answer them. Yes, we'll get to those. So, the timing is really purposeful because it is Heart Month, yep. it is congenital. Heart Disease Awareness Week, yeah. and many are celebrating that. Children's, of course, are partners at the American Heart Association. So just to help raise awareness, mm -hmm. what is congenital heart disease and how common is it? Sure, congenital heart disease is something really common that we see. It affects probably one to two in a hundred infants that are born in the United States and across the world. And congenital just means something that you were born with. Mm -hmm. So it's present from birth, as opposed to adult heart disease, which is something that gets acquired as we move through the course of the lives. Okay, so Children's is really the place for children yeah. with heart conditions. So what do we see and do here that's unique? Yeah, one of the great things about Children's Hospital is we offer the entire range of spectrum of healthcare. You know, not only do we see patients in the clinic to be able to diagnose and treat these conditions, but then if there is a problem and if there's something that we need to address, it can be done interventionally in the cath lab, it can be done with surgical interventions. We even do things as advanced as heart transplant. I myself take care of adults with congenital heart disease as well, so we take care of all age ranges and we have everything available for our patients right here in one spot. Are there any common types of heart disease, like you know, big buckets that you see of, of these conditions? Yeah, absolutely. The heart in general is made up of two sides, two pumps, and four valves. Any one of those areas can be a problem that's get affected. So we see valvar problems as a common form of congenital heart disease. Sometimes we can have problems with holes in between the chambers. And certainly people can have some acquired heart conditions that they get in their childhood, like a cardiomyopathy or a pump that isn't working the way we want it to work. Well, we're going to start heading back into the clinic area. Um, and while we do, we had a question from Instagram that was very future focused, which we love. Um, what are you excited about with the Chris Hart, or not Chris Hart Center, the Hubbard Center's Cardiac Care Unit coming online? Yeah. Well, one of the things that we are very excited about is this new cardiac care unit that's going to be going online in the next year or so. Mm -hmm. The great thing about this is, instead of having different areas of the hospital in which we're trying to accomplish different things, mm -hmm. there's going to be one area dedicated to children with congenital heart disease. And so we're going to be able to take care of everybody in these areas. We're going to have intensivists there, we're going to have cardiologists there, we're going to have subspecialists there. It's gonna be kind of the height of care for patients like this, and really one of the standards across the country. So we're very proud of everything that we're accomplishing there. And a better experience for patients, probably, because they're Absolutely. not going between different floors. Absolutely, I mean, typically at, center, at a lot of centers, we'll see a patient come into one unit, have to progress to another, maybe they go to an operation, and then ultimately have to go someplace else. But what we're looking for is a home for patients, right. where they can get to know their nurses, their doctors, the entire team that's helping them. Mm -hmm. So our next stop, um, I'm really excited about, we're going to take a live look at a pediatric heart ultrasound. So we have had a patient mm -hmm. and a mom, um, Leah is the patient, Molly is the mom, and they've been so gracious to allow us to come in and, and use this as a learning mm -hmm. opportunity to talk about this really important test. So before we go into one of our echo rooms, okay. what is an echocardiogram? Sure. An echocardiogram is really kind of the lifeblood of diagnostics and cardiology. In its simplest form, it's nothing more than an ultrasound or a machine that kind of uses sound waves to generate pictures. And so what we're going to be seeing in there is our sonographer, who's a skilled person able to diagnose heart disease, is going to be showing us parts of the heart. And what we'll see is not only the movement of the heart, but we can also see the flows within the heart as cool. well. We do about 10,000 of these echocardiograms a year on people of all ages, and it's really one of the most important diagnostic tests that we do. And so it's all right here in one center. Awesome. Well, we're going to knock. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. And this is Alia and Hi. her mom, Molly. Thank you guys so much for being so gracious and allowing us to uh, look and learn. And, and Molly, if you could just share with people just briefly 
Um, tell us about Leah's heart and why she comes to Children's. Well, um, Leah, it w her doctors discovered that she had a hole in her heart, and so we came to Children's to get that repaired, and we've just been coming for some follow-up, um, or follow-up, uh, yeah. Ever since. Appointments ever since. Yeah. Well, thank you again. And Dr. Kramer is going to kind of talk through, walk through what um, Erica, our sonographer, is looking at. Just what are we seeing? Help yeah. us ex understand yeah. it. Absolutely. So for parents and families, an echocardiogram gets to be a pretty common thing. And I bet this is something you guys have seen a whole bunch of. But uh, what we have here is Erica, our skilled sonographer, is taking a picture of really the most basic, kind of simple uh, view that we have of the heart. What we're seeing here is the left atrium, or one of the receiving chambers of the heart, taking blood and then moving it down through this mitral valve into the left ventricle. On the other side, as I talked about earlier, there's kind of two sides to a heart. Uh, we've got the right atrium, which is a receiving chamber of blood and going down through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. If Erica puts some color flow on that mitral valve there, what we see is much like Doppler weather radar, we see colors. A lot of people will get confused and think that the colors actually are the red and the blue blood within the heart, but actually all we're seeing is movement of blood either towards the probe or away from the probe. So as we're looking, we're seeing red flow kind of coming down from her lungs into her left atrium and down into the left ventricle. If Erica were to just gently tip forward, we can actually see blood leaving the heart there. So there we have blue flow as blood is moving away and out of the heart. So it's really kind of cool and we can take measurements of that and we can take some pretty important information from these areas. Now Leah's special because she had a little bit of a hole in the upper chambers of heart that we called an atrial septal defect. Can you show us right in here? So when Leah was born, again, she was born with a small communication in this area of the heart. And if we put color across that area, we can see that it's no longer there because Leah's had that repaired. And so we no longer have blood flow abnormally passing from one side to the other. So she's had a very successful course and it looks like yeah. she's doing really well. Yeah. Molly, have you ever heard it kind of like walked through like that before? Um, they drawn it out for us afterwards so uh -huh. we haven't had the walkthrough while we were in having the yeah actual. that is that's great that your repair looks good and you see how why it's so important to get the right care and get that taken care of yeah, that's, absolutely there's that's a lot of important cool. things that we learn here in the echo lab yeah and it helps you diagnose things too right absolutely at the, the outset like so. i said it's really kind of the lifeblood of diagnostic cardiology this mm -hmm. is a quick easy efficient test and as long as people are as good as Leah is, we can get pretty good images. <laughs> oh here. my gosh, yeah, she is still, and is it is she pretty used to it by now? I imagine. Um, she still gets a little nervous. A little nervous. <laughs> sure, yeah. sure. Well, you guys have been so kind, and I hope you have a great rest of your appointment, and things look good. So, thank bye, you. Bye, guys. Thank you, thank you so you. much. So we're gonna keep good. walking and talking. That was so kind of them, mm -hmm. and very cool to see. She was a little nervous. Yeah. So we were happy that she did okay. Yeah, but you know what? I've been in there, and the little ones, you know, there can be tears. Absolutely. And some some writhing around. So so that was good. So in general, you mentioned how many echocardiograms are done mm -hmm. a year here. In general, like how many surgeries? How many you know kids do we yeah. see in the Chris Hart Center? annually. In general, congenital heart disease is a pretty rare thing. And so what that means is it's really important to go to a center in which we do a lot. And at this center, we're certainly one of the biggest ones in the entire region. And so what that means is we do roughly 500 surgeries a year. Our three surgeons yeah. keep very busy and they do them both in adults down at the university as well as children's here uh, as well. We do about 10,000 echocardiograms each year, which is a lot of echoes. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, just hundreds of inpatient admissions. Our cath team as well is right. also very good and they do more than 300 cases a year. So that really puts us at one of the larger volume areas and with volume comes experience. And that's right. really one of the best parts about working here is that we see a lot of stuff and we don't get surprised very often. You have mentioned adults a couple times, which mm -hmm. people might be like, adults, children. So talk to us about what adult 
congenital heart diseases sure. and about that specialty. Yeah, you're gonna probably gonna have to limit me a little bit. I know then this I is get your passion. <laughs> about this. But this is really what I do, and this is uh, I'm the director of our adult program, and mm -hmm. really what it is is we've had tremendous success with the pediatric population over the previous decades, and when you have success with serious heart disease people do what they naturally do, which is get bigger. And they mm -hmm. turn into adults, mm -hmm. and they start worrying about adult things in life, like getting a job, and going to college, and doing all sorts of fun mm -hmm. stuff. And in the past, there really hasn't been a great area for these patients to go, because it's a challenge for adult cardiologists to know rare disease, and it's a challenge for pediatric cardiologists to know adult disease. And so, our specialty has kind of been born, and so we're one of the few centers in the entire region, really one of 35 in the country, wow. that take care of these aging population patients, and we see patients into their 60s and 70s. So it's literally a specialty that never existed before because now people are, those kids are doing so well. It is. It's, it's a specialty born out of a lot of success and yeah. certainly a lot of hard work. That's really interesting. Yeah. What's on the screen? Well, this is really cool. One of the things that we do very well uh, here is kind of advanced imaging techniques. And what we saw earlier was an echocardiogram, which is really one of the most basic techniques that we have. What we're looking at here is a dynamic MRI picture. And what we're seeing is that same thing that we saw in the echo, but we're actually seeing it with an MRI. And you can see the heart and the chest kind of moving around. Axial imaging, or CT, or MRI, mm. is a big part of what we do here, and we have a bunch of dedicated cardiologists to, to do that. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to take these models and then generate actual 3D models. Which, hey, here we are. <laughs> and and it's, it's wild to me to see these because you have this teeny tiny guy right here and then quite a bit bigger. It, yeah. just, it like highlights the vast, um, difference in sizes and Absolutely. severity we see. So can you talk a little bit about 3D printing, why it, why it helps our team be better, um, and maybe walk through a little bit. Absolutely. These guys. So what we're looking at impressive. here, yeah. I'm gonna let well, you hold that. Right. <laughs> what we're looking at here is actually what we call kind of uh, a model. This is something that we use to calibrate the system to kind of show where things normally need to line up and make sure that we're doing things appropriately. This is a pretty complex, complete model. Obviously, we see the rib cage around the entire sternum, and then we see the heart kind of underneath the sternum there. If we kind of turn it around, we can see blood vessels as they course through the chest cavity, as well as the descending aorta and other important parts there. Mm -hmm. But this is something that's really complex, and what we oftentimes need to do is what we want to know is we want to know about the heart. Mm -hmm. And so if we take all that away and we use uh, our heart model, here we have a model of the heart that's been color-coded so that we can more easily kind of identify structures. This is that left ventricle that we talked about before, and this is the right ventricle. One of the benefits of having 3D models is then we can then open up and we can actually see what the problem may be or what the orientation or what the problems are. And so what we have here is kind of an opened-up view of what yeah. we were looking at before. Now, this is an adult-sized heart, and this okay. is a healthy sized heart. Okay. What we wanted to kind of demonstrate was this wouldn't even be actually one of our smallest hearts that our surgeons operate Aren't on. Aren't the smallest ones kind of the size of a walnut? They're about the size yeah. of a walnut yeah. and our surgeons wow. are extremely skilled mm -hmm. in being able to find these problems. But you can certainly imagine the difficulty mm -hmm. in trying to repair a small hole like that. So these models become really important in that the surgeon can then look in them find what the problem is, kind of wow. get their orientation, and then being able to fix them. Again, this is a normal heart that we're just using for size. Mm -hmm. And kind of the last thing that we would show would be kind of an abnormal heart. Here, you can see that there's two big blood vessels leaving the heart. In this particular heart, this form of congenital heart disease, there's just a single artery leaving. Mm. So we use them for a lot of different reasons, and really they are an important part of our kind of technology that we use to treat patients. In our program, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, nationally, we just have a lot of great skill and talent at this, and I mean, they make hearts, they make lots of other specialty, yeah. you know, organs and things, so. We're very lucky. lucky. Yeah. Yeah, we're very lucky. I'm an Omaha native. I got to come home, and it's been a great place. We've got subspecialists in every single area. There's not an area that we're missing. We have fetal cardiologists, we have imaging doctors, cath doctors, transplant doctors, and great surgeons. You mentioned transplant, mm -hmm. and um, that is one of our um, programs that we offer here. What 
what gets you to that stage? Is it heart failure? Just like what has to be happening to get to that sure. stage? And just a little about that program. Yeah, transplant's a really complex thing, and that's why we have three cardiologists dedicated to the idea of heart failure and transplant. Mm -hmm. You know, really, they'd be the best people to address it. But yeah. in general, what we're talking about when we're talking about heart transplant is the idea that the heart that we have is no longer a viable option yeah. to move forward. Whether that's because of pump failure, or because of congenital heart disease, or because of many other reasons, but really oftentimes transplant is the last option that mm -hmm. we have. And we're really saying that we need to give up on the heart that we have and we need to move on to a better solution. Yeah, um, it just highlights to me as you talk about transplant. I mean, mm -hmm. whether you, you have Leah's case or you're in a transplant situation or ACHD, this is a journey. And what our heart families go through is really a journey and it's yeah. remarkable. What's it like to be able to journey alongside? And, and what, I guess, impresses you most about the kids and the families you work with? Yeah, I think one of the things that I've really learned is that a lot of people have a lot of strength that they didn't know that they had. Yeah. And you find that out in times of kind of extreme stress. And that's something that I, um, I enjoy being able to help people understand and kind of allay some of the fear that's associated with that. And I think that's really important. And I enjoy that both in seeing children as well as taking care of adults because there's no doubt about it, having congenital heart disease is a stressful thing. And so if you can find a team that's willing to support you and willing to help you and have strive for great outcomes, I think that's what we're really good at here. Mm -hmm. We've had some other um, kind of specific diagnosis questions on Facebook yeah. as well that we might um, answer in the comments um, later since mm -hmm. they are so specific. But thank you so much for sharing your time sure. and expertise Absolutely. today My with pleasure. us. Um, just such cool things going on in this in this heart center in this program so uh, this is is how we are choosing to help raise awareness for congenital heart disease yeah. week and heart month and uh, again a special shout out and um, just gratitude to our heart families Absolutely. and our patients yeah. because they're amazing um, and we're so proud to walk alongside you so uh, thanks for tuning in everyone and you can learn more at childrensomaha.org heart